Hey guys, what you're about to watch is a little tour we did with Max Cezanne in his workshop. I just want to give you a little context. We went out to LA and we shot like four or five videos and saw different friends of ours out there along with the birdcage at Jay Leno's place. And on the way to the airport, we realized we really had just time for one more. So we cruised by Max Cezanne's place. He certainly was at the top of my list, but he was the last guy we were able to squeeze in. So anyway, context for it. There'll be more to come. First episode of our recent trip to LA. Hey guys, uh, we had a few minutes to squeeze in the massive talent that is Max is on. <laughs> he said, hey, he's excited to come by and get a yeah. little tour and talk about his stuff. Talking me up, but I was still like plan B. Oh, you weren't plan B. <laughs> no, it's actually, for with you, I always feel like I'm interrupting because I know you're a one-man shop and when you're talking, you're not working. And you know, when we used to be that way, it, it, I, like if anybody came over, everything stops. And they don't realize, yeah, I'm not making money if I'm not working. So I feel like I'm imposing, so thanks for letting us. Oh, no, you actually invade. caught me at the perfect time. I was seriously procrastinating. I was like going from eBay to Craigslist, aimless. So when Looking you texted me, things. I'm like, come over, come over. Come over, stop me yeah. from making a purchase. Yeah, I don't need to exactly. make. All right, yeah. well, good. So, so what are you working on right now? I've seen um, this a bit on the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, this is uh, just a, another front wheel where I'm just kind of winging it. And honestly, this one was a really big pain in the ass because I made this drum a certain size thinking that we could get a cast iron liner made, you know, no problem, which, you know, is usually the case. But um, on this one, I made it in some size. They just didn't have anything to machine it out of. Oh, really? So, um, yeah, I actually I had a barbecue at my house, which means that you get the drunkest because you're not going anywhere. And the next day I decided I'm going to sweat this out. And I was putting a, a plate on the barbell. And I look at this plate and I'm like, that's it. So I brought two 35 pound plates to the machine shop and they made these cast iron sleeves. Out of, out of, out of a plate off of a barbell. Yeah. Yeah. I just, uh, I was looking for something and anyway, I let So I can see the that. liner. Yeah. So is yeah. there no, I mean, how do you, I guess it's not. I was going to say, uh, how do you measure the strength of that, that casting? Or is there the guy was an aerospace uh, machinist. He has some way to like, you know, check the actual the metal. Hardness, but you, just want, yeah. you just want cast iron because it's porous. So right, it's okay. a good breaking surface. Otherwise, we would have gone like stainless or whatever right. else. So it, it'll grab. Yeah, it's exactly. And then these are the parts I've been making. So this was, you know, at a solid. And, you know, it sucks doing it yourself. You know, I wish I had a CNC, but everyone's like, oh, it's so rewarding doing it yourself. I'm like... No, it's just cost effective. You know what's rewarding is hitting yeah, the button, yeah, exactly, yeah, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Or you well, call up my buddy Mark and be like, "Hey, when when will it be done?" So, so you're gonna have this lined in it with a shoe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So line this, arc it, and then ease. Yeah. Where's the carrier? That's one. Uh, so this was another block, and I cut and welded some pieces, like you know this guy here. But this will sit like that, and then you okay, will sure. see a little bit of the action there. But right. it's got a little vent on the front. And then it goes on this Sorry, bike. I'm looking at the machine marks. Man. So, you know, this one, you usually have like a turbo or a supercharger or something. And I had to like invent ways to make things hard for myself on this one. So I uh, made the suspension, um, actually made the carburetors too. So these were all from, you know, blocks of aluminum. Wow. So, Sorry, yeah. I need to hold one. Yeah, there you go. Sorry. <laughs> what? You made this from solid? Mm hmm. Yeah, actually, well, there's three pieces there. Um, there's a velocity stack, the flange, and then um, all this stuff. But the tricky thing with this is, A, I've never done it before, and you're trying to make all these passages miss each other inside this block without any of them, you know, hitting or... Yeah, you yeah know, so, crossing through. Yeah, we'll see how it runs. I mean, it's, it's pretty crazy. So there's that, and then there's this part. So instead of having a float bowl, it's a remote diaphragm. I saw this on a jet ski once. Like, I, I know what you're talking about. So they I do, can yeah. hide it somewhere. And yeah. same thing, I was just kind of winging it. And um, I started out with uh, the idea I was just going to make a concentric carb and have a remote float bowl. But then I started putting you know, float bowls around. It just didn't look good. So I had to come up with something else. But So yeah. where are you going to mount this? I have no idea. It's still coming together. Yeah. So but I love the idea that that you end up just kicking this out, no float, and it looks like it doesn't work. Yeah. Right. Well, no, the best one is the 
you know, the one that goes on the front, I forget which one's which, but the angle that it sits right. at. You know, I just wanted it to be yeah. as ridiculous. Perfectly. Looking, yeah, exactly. Parallel straight, to the port. Right. Exactly. So. That's pretty badass. Yeah, I've, it's gonna I've be had cool. dreams of what it would be like. I hope it runs. Me too. Yeah. But I, I'm gonna, I mean, just to say I'm gonna do it. And how much science of carburation did you study? Oh, none. To determine jet I bought, sizing. I bought a Makuni carburetor and just measured some of the stuff. because It seems to work for them, so. They, they've got a thing or two. Yeah, yeah they've done a few, so. I love that. I'm really looking forward to hearing about how this is going to go. <laughs> I don't mean that yeah. as a vote of confidence. Oh, or, yeah, everyone or, loves or, seeing other people miserable. No, like, seeing no, struggle I, with it. I know but. you. That's, that's what's great about you is you have the, pa they have the passion enough to drive the patience to you know, continue. The thing is, I've been winging it for so long that I'm just used to it now. It's like, well, how do you, I, I have no idea if it's going to work change? or not, but I, yeah, I'll figure it out. But um, anyway, so now that the front wheel is almost done and, you know, the front suspension's done, I can just about put it all together and take it off the table because whenever I do the body work, I do it on the floor. Why is that? It, you know, I've done it before where it looks great from this angle and then you put it down and it looks like shit. So that's why I wait until I get to this stage and I'll put it on the ground and you know, put some foam on it and start shaping it. My approach would be, not that you need to do this, when I, th I know what you're saying, but I so badly want to be parallel to it that I like it at this height. I would want it just over there, and then I'd want to snip way oh, back, yeah. right? I, I'll walk around it. I mean, sometimes it happens quick. Sometimes it'll take, you know, a week of staring at it, and it's just, yeah. not, it's just not there. I just see it as a photo, I think. I think that's what it always is for me. Oh, I the photos it, look great I see level. it as that long, level photo, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so I'm curious. You said this is a, a new client. First, has he ever had a bike built before? No, no, no. He's what? a bike enthusiast, and he had this Vincent in pieces. He brought it over, and it was just like a dream thing. I didn't know what my next project was going to be, and I get a, um, I get an email or a phone call from some guys like, "Hey, I have a Vincent. You know, I want you to build a bike." I'm like, "Yeah, sure." So he brings the the, the engine here, and originally we were going to leave the motor stock right. and not mess with it because it's you know valuable. And he's got the whole bike in in pieces. So, um, you know, a month or so went by and it's just sitting here. And then he was like, you know, do it or do whatever you want. I think he saw another bike that I was doing and he liked that better. So, really, you know, the first thing I did was I started messing with it. I mean, it still kind of looks the same, but, um, you know, the motor, this is the, the transmission's moved over an inch. Yeah, I was so wondering can, its proportions are weird. Yeah, because the, uh, the, oh. re the rear tire is so fat. Yeah, yeah, I'm with and you. The dual mags, belt drive, um, just mess with it a little bit, dual plugs. What about. Okay, so he, he, he let you go. Sorry, I'm, I'm just wondering, like, he said, I want a custom motorcycle? Or he said, I want a custom yeah, low max on bike? Or, like... I'll tell you what, I, I don't know how I got this lucky. Okay, But right, it's like, right. there's, a, there's, there's a fine I tell art you to how. getting money from someone yeah. and not having any idea what you're going to do. I know. It's like, hey, I know. so I have no idea what I'm going to do, but we need to start with a big check. But, but it's because you're, you're, well, I think like us and the team, you're a clutch player. And that is when the pressure comes on and the deadline starts to loom, mm -hmm. then the best ideas start to spark. Whereas some people, I think their best ideas spark with no pressure, no deadlines, no t because that yeah. that creates too much of uh, too much anxiety. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, nervousness. honestly, for me, the, the deadlines are never really an issue. We always always kind of seem to hit the deadline. But, but I mean that when someone gives you the, the money, oh, when yeah. they give you the money, that is a deadline that's been created, right? Oh, yeah. Now you're holding on to their cash. Yeah. So there's a pressure in, involved for me anyway. Oh yeah, I mean in the beginning it was it was nerve wracking. You know, someone would come in, and all of a sudden, you know, because I used to do this for fun, right? And you know, as a hobby, and there's there's zero pressure. You know, a no one was going to see it, and now I don't care, you know, what people say. But you know, yeah. now it's also like I want to come up with something that I've never seen before, as well as you know they've never seen. So it's and challenge yourself and. Yeah, Enjoy I mean, that. Yeah, and you know what I found? Like I thought I'm like, is the well going to run dry at some point? Am I going to run out of ideas? And no, so no, not yet. Uh, so we've been on this trip uh, through LA. Uh, we took the birdcage, which is outside in the parking lot, by the yeah. way. <laughs> went to Leno's and did a thing with Leno, and then we went to Jonathan Ward's at Icon. And we spent hours with Jonathan. And I think, well, I already got some realizations from it, which is someone like him who's been 20, 30 years in the business of what he does, mm -hmm. he didn't really know he was going to create a business around it. He just started building stuff and building Land Cruisers. Is that the one step just leads to the next step, just leads to the next step. And before you know it, you're talking about the fasteners on things that will never ever be seen and how there's five different kinds that from five different suppliers and why this one's the best one and how proud he is of that accomplishment to have gone down to the end of that road mm -hmm. to figure out which one is the best one. Yeah. And then to be so in touch with what's available, if something comes along that's even better, 
right? There's a tiny bit more satisfaction he gets out of from going that next step further. And that's a rare dude. And you're that dude. You're that guy. Yeah. So I mean, they'll never run dry. <laughs> things will change. Yeah. I mean, I like to also do things like put your effort, you know, where it counts. You know, some people sit there and, you know, Ian, yeah. he, he made, you know, some beautiful, you know, bikes and his Vincent was incredible. But he sat there and like machined every bolt. And I'm like, dude, like, Let's do some big ticket things here, you know? Like, put your effort where something, it counts. Something that makes a wider uh, Yeah, or just like, wow. Effect. So, right. anyway, yeah, I mean, when I told, I can't who I was talking to, I was like, yeah, you know, oh, it was uh, Mark, because I machined this rear wheel. Okay. And um, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna put a 200 on the back of the Vincent, and he's like, really? I was like, yeah, yeah, fuck it, why not? I think it'll look proportionately pretty cool with, with that fat tire yeah. and a slick, and especially now, like, they're making the slick so tall, mm -hmm. like MotoGP bikes, yeah. it just, it looks awesome. So. Um, I think it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, continue the tour. Okay. All right. So I've slowly like wedged more and more stuff in here. And this was almost a big mistake. I wanted this lathe and I didn't realize the elevator like couldn't even come close to lifting it. We're on the second floor. Yeah. So, you know, I sat there on the loading dock and took it apart to like nuts and bolts. And I, the thing was, I didn't realize that the lathe was painted over this seam. I didn't realize it was in two pieces. Oh. So I, I was sitting there and I'm like, oh shit. I was like looking into renting a crane, like a boom truck. Yeah. Like take the window out. Through the window, something. right. And it just wasn't going to happen. And it, you know, surprisingly, you can rent like one of those big ass, like six wheel, like boom trucks. Yeah. Like by yourself. Like yeah. you don't need any qualifications. Up. Like yeah. you just like you sign here. It's surprising that you don't sign your life away and they'll give you whatever you want. Yeah. 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 Big, and the guy's still emailing me. Like, hey, you want the truck, man? <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So I, I eventually got it apart, but this was, this, you know, let me speed up so much, you know, because so, you can take off so much more material, yeah. you know, for the first, you know, 10 years, it was that little yeah. thing oh, wow. and you can stop it with your hand. So yeah. Yeah, that's the one thing you do have to watch out a little bit with this. So it's like, it, it'll pull, yeah, it it'll doesn't pull know your if, hand it, off. It doesn't know if you're there. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, of like, course. I used to have the air hose on this side and I was reaching over this thing a lot and I, it whacked me once. I thought I broke my finger and then I'm like, all right, that was my one wake up call. I got off light. I moved everything to that side so you don't have to be near the chuck. But yeah, this thing was a huge time saver and it's also really accurate. So, you know, we, like, we just got a new one or a yeah. newest one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there. Yeah, so I mean, you know, like Craig got this uh, Monarch. Yeah. And I was like, damn, damn Craig. So I, I, got a, I got a bigger one. So we have one. Yeah. We're probably going to give away. Oh, the Monarch? But yeah, in a contest. I'm going to, my passion at this point I realized is empowering other guys to build stuff and, and like whether it be teaching them or giving them tools or giving them inspiration or whatever mm -hmm. and so as we get new tools and we upgrade my plan is to start developing contests for home builders to get this stuff for free by telling us why they want it essentially and yeah and it's a game changer, right? Mm -hmm. Like our first lathe and our first mill is like, whoa, I'm giddy with excitement that you oh, could yeah. do whatever you wanted, right? Oh yeah, and I mean, with this one, I mean, you can fit, you can put a whole wheel on there, and like no problem. And yeah, yeah. And What's the swing on that? I mean, well, you, you can take this out. Oh, so yeah, you it's, can take um, it off. Yeah. I think you can get up to, you can put a 32 inch piece on it. Okay. Yeah. So it's big. The fact that you took a, a part though, and just pulled it on the elevator one piece at a time. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, actually I borrowed uh, my friend's engine lift. Okay. Yeah, you know, an engine, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. engine crane. I think crane. it weighs 5,500 pounds. So it's pretty heavy. Um, yeah, I know I'm doing it solo. That's the other thing, too. Like all the heavy parts, like even like the, you know, the slide and all the bed and everything like that. And it just this reminds me of a Johnny Cash song. What is it like one piece at a time? Oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking I about? Know, I don't know that one. He, he, he works at a Cadillac factory and he, he got a Cadillac and he takes it one piece at a time. And the joke is that like he, he would sneak it out of the place. And the joke is that. It ended up being like all the years because it took him so many years to get each piece out and none of it fit together. Oh, yeah. Never mind. I'll send it to you. <laughs> yeah. later. Whatever. Sorry. So yeah. At least you got it back together and it works. Yeah. So this is like a new custom Max is on. I need to sell this thing. Like, we should so take we had, it with had us. We had a house in the desert, sold that. Because, like, you know, out in Joshua Tree, I don't understand what people do out there. You know, like they go and they like take selfies, like, I'm in Joshua Tree Park. Yeah. And they kind of hang out and then you just They're influencers. You know, post. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, this is boring as hell. So I'm getting a dirt bike and we sold the house. And now I just like every time I get on one of these things, either I get hurt or my friends get hurt and they're just a bad idea. So I'm you just. You sound a lot like me. Sorry. Yeah. I mean. Chris Davis. <laughs> it, it's cool looking and it's fun, but yeah. they're just. Chris, you want to put it on the top of the van? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Chris yeah. will take it. It's cool though. So, but you keep the little guy. 
Yeah, it's actually really nice having two, because you can be, like I have this thing set to make something else at a certain angle, like a taper, and you can leave it set, and also, you know, for the tiny stuff, it's, you know, but like I said, this thing's a lot safer, you can just, you can stop it. Wow. If you have to. Oh, because it slips, I see. Yeah, you know, slips. and people love to just be like, I can't believe you're leaving the Chuck key in there. I'm like, oh, that's I mean, here, you know what? Yeah, I, think dude, it, I think it's you time. And Craig, you and Craig. I think it's time you just to leave. show people what happens if you turn on a little lathe with a Chuck key in. Oh, that didn't no take one your, died. Didn't take your face out. Yeah. Oh. So anyway, yeah, this one is nice for doing the little stuff. And then and it has the best view. You know, I wanted a shop with windows. I had one with no windows in New York, and I was losing my mind. So it's anyway, good. this is where I've spent the last three days. I can see can, the mess. Yeah, I mean, it's just like it gets in everything, like in the soles of your yeah. shoes, and then it gets in the carpet of your car. But I like it when you're in the shower and it comes out. Oh yeah. On, on, on no, the, the best is when like I see. No, I just like it when you're in the shower. Oh yeah. Sorry. No, or like my <laughs> one-year-old, I just like put him down and I just see like all the all the metal shavings that have stuck Perfect. from my hands. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So and the. Uh, What's that? The white, I think, I the think white called metal. a sousaphone. No, I the it. white body, the uh, body, the motorcycle body. <laughs> so that I'm actually going to show the, the the turbo bike that I just built. Okay. The first time around, that was the bodywork that I made. Oh. It holds fuel, sort of. So I built it. It's all carbon fiber. Oh wow. And I was trying to make something crazy. I just didn't realize that the gasoline ate the epoxy that yes. I used. And fuel I came in two weeks later, all proud of what I'd done. The bike didn't run. But there was just like milky gasoline all over my dad's garage floor. And it ate the epoxy floor and oh, not the first time I ruined his stuff. You got in trouble? Yeah. Not really. Not really. I, think he just, I think he's used to it now. Your dad must be a saint. You've told me a bit about your You know what? I mean, I, I think I just, I just wore him down to the point where like he just gave up. You know, <laughs> he's just like, all right. And yeah. you said, Dad, I'm moving to the West Coast. He's like, okay. <laughs> I think at that point I'd straightened my act up a little all right, bit. All right. So I wasn't ruining the stuff, but yeah. So did you rebuild that thing? Because I could tell it's been rebuilt at least. Uh, no, I bought it like that. That's like Southern California. It's nice it's thing. So like, clean. You, just, you want a mill? It's like there's like 15 of them right here. And um, if yeah. someone wants that heavy thing hauled off. Yeah, that's yeah. it. So then I added the, the digital DRO. readouts and yeah. you know, all the stuff. And the drive. It's good. Yeah. I mean, this, this thing is the one that nobody ever gets one, but it's just like the nicest thing. Because anyone who's ever had to go from this to putting a chuck in it, mm -hmm. you know, it's probably like a hundred cranks of this knob, and now you just... You're so fancy. I know. I earned it. Chris just looked at it. He's going to have to buy one of those. Yeah. They're not I even mean, that the expensive. Only thing, no, no. And it takes 10 minutes to put on. You just got to remember to take this thing off. Because when you hit the lever, this thing comes around and like gives you the worst bruise ever. Unlike the chuck key. Yeah, this thing, this thing will like hit you hard. But yeah, this has been three days almost three days straight of staying there. There's something kind of peaceful about coming into the shop and knowing exactly what you're going to be doing for the day and not like, you know, trying to figure things out and problem solve. But um, yeah, after three days of watching this table go around at like half an RPM. So what do you, do, what's your process? Do you, I mean, I, I know once you're, I know about machining, but I mean, do you like listen to podcasts? Do you listen to music? Do you get in a zone? How do you? Yeah, a little bit of both. Um, I try and listen to the news to save time, you know, you know, so I don't have to like sit and read. You like to listen about Trump, I get it. What's that? You like to hear about Trump. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, so keep up all, with Trump. Yeah, okay. it's all definitely yeah. like along party yeah. lines news. Uh huh. But um, <laughs> no, it's just, just a mix of anything, really. I mean, I try and stay super focused because, as you know, when you're doing these types of things, like it's cumulative. You can work on something for three days, and all it takes is just turn this the wrong way once, and it's over. It's trash. Yeah. So that's why I try and. Um, write out exactly what I'm going to do. So you got your order right there. Yeah. Um, you can see the windows a little littered up too. Um, but yeah, so I try and write it out so you don't back yourself into a corner. And mm -hmm. also like machining, sometimes you think, oh man, this thing's so sick. And then you realize when you flip it over, you've got no way to grab it. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, yeah. I'm it's, with you. Um, it's nice to be able to do 99% of the stuff in house. And you know, if the piece is real big, I'll have, you know, you know, the market, the CNC place, you know, just, just take care of like 90% of the material and I'll just I'll finish it off here. Get it done. So it looks like you did it. Oh, I take all the credit. Yeah, yeah I get yeah. it. Of I mean, I'll, I'll tag him in it, but no one looks at the tag. <laughs> yeah. So this wheel I'm looking at too. Yeah, I mean, this is, it's decent. I mean, it's not the best. I bought it no? on eBay, but um, it's is good it enough. cheap? Is it just repro? It was about four grand. I was going to say, it, is, it looks good. Yeah. yeah. It looks like a it's nice, decent. strong, it's big enough for panels on cars. I bought it when I built that bike for Bobby with the enclosed rear fender. And oh, uh, right. yeah, I was 
I didn't realize you can do things in pieces. I was just like, I was trying to make it in like one, one. starting out with a 50 inch piece of aluminum. And I get close, but then you get, you get some weird stress in it and you just can't get it. It wants to like pop one way or the other. You know, it's like pop, pop. Right. And, um, and then, oh, you, and so then it's all off. The trash. So do you end up with a split in the middle or? Yeah, I just, yeah. I made it in two pieces and it was so much Way easier. Too yeah, cause easy. I was thinking in my head, I'm like, wait, they make cars. How do they do this? Yeah. And Seems. then I'm like, no, they, they make it in pieces. They're good at welding. It, it took like a week for me, like a failures to realize that. But then I realized, I'm like, really? they do it in pieces. So now oh, you're, yeah. I mean, to me, you're like this long experienced metal shaper that has done it for a really, really long time. I couldn't even remotely touch what you do. You know, it's, I, when I started, I had to teach myself how to do everything. So I taught myself how to weld aluminum and yeah. do all that. Just no YouTube, nothing. So I'm kind of used to that process of just, you know, I don't really. So you still, you still do that. You, when you're doing things, you don't go try to watch your YouTube videos or call people to, uh, no technical while, training? I mean, usually I find out after the fact. So, I mean, you were at Magnus's place, and uh, yeah. I was at um, another Porsche guy, Rod Emery. Yeah, I know Rod. Uh, they, yeah. They, Rod's yeah. amazing metal shaver. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah. that's where, I'll show you the shrinker that I have. But I was in Rod's shop once, and he's like, dude, try this shrinker. And he did it, and I'm Shrink. like. Oh, oh, yeah, I've seen this one. And I was like, the, as soon as I used it, I was like, man, fuck you. Like, now you know I have to go buy this because it saves so much time. But he was like, yeah, and so once you anneal the metal, you can just you know, go to town. I'm like, anneal? And what, is, what is that? Are and you serious? Yeah, and so he gave me this thing, and he's, just, he's like, yeah, man, use this temperature stick, or you can just use your soot. And I'm like, I annealed the metal, and I was like, I can't believe I've been doing this for so long, just like full hardness, full hardness steel. Yeah. And I mean, I, I used to shape like half a gas tank, and I'd be on that shrinker for like two days straight, just shrinking a tiny bit at a time. But anyway. Yeah. So you have no respect for power hammers? You know what? I couldn't have one in New York because I was in a building where like you couldn't mm. make a lot of noise. So there was no planishing hammers, no power hammers. And I just got used to doing it with, you know, quiet yeah. tools. So right. even hammering was, you know, I had to wait until like after hours. Here they don't care? I mean, you can't hear anything in this building. It's just solid concrete. So much concrete. Yeah, you can fire a bike up and, yeah, and my neighbors right there probably hate me because that's just a sheetrock wall. Oh. So, you know, I'm sitting there like, like trying to tune a bike in the shop. I just open the windows and like turn a fan on and fire I, them up. I just love that this is where you've chosen to put your workshop still and you're still here. You know what? It, when we moved to California, I needed to find a place quick because I needed somewhere to ship all my stuff. And I was like, you know, this is nice. It'll do. And I figured I'd move somewhere else afterwards. But um, yeah, now eight years. Now heavy. Yeah. And then, well, yeah, there's that. I don't want to move it again. But you know, if you're only building like, you know, a couple custom bikes a year and you're by yourself, you don't need a whole lot. Yeah. And so, you know, I've you know, got a good deal going here. And no, I like it. I like it. And it's I just, got windows, man. Yeah, it's got windows. It's on a corner. And, you know, the fact that there's so much activity going on out there, too. Yeah. Like, y y it's hard to be lazy when you're watching a whole lot of people move around. Oh, I yeah. find. I mean, it's just like a straight up. This building is like just full of sweatshops. And like, so it's, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass. I mean, you saw the loading dock and, yeah. you know, if you're especially tuning a bike. Yeah. You know, it's like this is downtown L.A. It's like it's kind of gnarly out there. You know, it's like, yeah, it's like charming. you don't want to wheel your bike through one of the puddles and then into the shop. It's just it's kind of nasty. <laughs> Actually, some water dripped on us in the alleyway as I was walking by. And That's my OK. First, Those are just air conditioning. My first thought was gross. Yeah. Really gross. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that is. I don't want to know. Yeah. Die. Yeah. But no, it's cool. I mean, there's some life outside. And being from New York, this makes you feel. Yeah. I think I kind of need it. Yeah. And it's also, you know, it's. You know, where we live now is really nice. It's like a nice little neighborhood, and there's like, you know, a main street, and it's green, and it's like the middle school, like right down the street. And I'm like, kind of need to like, you know, have the, the have a little bit of a transition, yeah. So you're not moving? No, I mean, I'm just gonna stay here as long as I can. Well, we had thoughts of moving into a bigger place, and now I'm thinking, maybe we just stay. It feels good. It was, for, it's for such a, while. a huge expense. I mean, there is actually a, a space downstairs that I've eyed, but you know, it's safe. You know, you're not getting away with too much on the second floor, you know, from this shop. I love that you're still thinking like a New York. Yeah. You don't want them to steal your stuff. I've actually, I've gotten bikes down the stairs before. I'm like looking at this as we're talking. Sorry, what? Oh, this? yeah. You want to touch it? Dude, it's amazing. Yeah. This hub is amazing. Is that all one piece? Yeah. So that's, the, that's one where I'll have Mark, you know, do 90% of it on a CNC lathe. And, or, you know, this ring. Yeah, which yeah. Is, right. Um, that rim was custom made. Yeah, yeah, actually here. I'll show you, show you how high tech my drawings are. With the, with the lip and everything. Yep. Shoulder. So I, I wanted to do a shouldered rim and then this was actually what I, I just did this with a Sharpie. 
this is the front, this is the rear, sent it to him. And I'm like, all right, cool. So you got this? And he's, <laughs> he's like, yeah. And then uh, this was actually, this is a cross section of this guy here. So on something repetitive like that, it's, yeah. not, it's not worth it. You just let a, yeah. let a computer do it. But right. that's actually the cross section yeah, of this you. right here. The, this is your CAD work. Yeah. That's good. And so you do that, which takes about five minutes, and then let someone else do it. But it, but it, I mean, it's still, it's super ambitious. Yeah, and, and it's really pretty. And this rim, too. This is a you know, oh, CNC'd yeah. rim. I don't know why, but I never even thought of that. And then do you cut, or did he cut all the, the spoke? I do all that stuff here. Cause, it's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it's easier just to start doing it than it is to try and like do the calculations. Sometimes it's like, just put the hub in the middle and put a ruler there and just mark it and be like, okay, that, that looks about right. So I was looking for the various snickers and, and uh, sweating that would come out of an engineer to hear you say oh, that. Oh, uh, people just, they, see, they, they see my stuff and they see how little thought I put into it. And they're just Dude, there's like, a lot of thought put into it. No, oh, yeah, I yeah. like your approach. If I was going to do it, that's the way I would do it, right? But yeah. that's not the way an engineer will. You say that to an engineer, it's just like, you know. Yeah, like, what the, I mean, <laughs> on Instagram, people love it too. Like, what the calculations? What are you doing? Yeah, I'm, like, yeah. I'm like, the shit works. I'm like, just easy. <laughs> or they're going to be like, you know, the heat dissipation on this. I'm like, this is so overkill. Like, you yeah. just kind of got to be close, and it'll be fine. I mean, it's obviously not lightweight. Like, it's, no, it's, it's got some heft to it. But, yeah. I, I mean, but between the, the scale, the scale is beautiful. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, I mean, it looks cool whenever you have a big-ass drum. It just makes it look like a race bike. Yeah. You know, old school. Is this one of the Coker Repop Firestone tires? Or is this Firestone you know, making this? I'm not sure. Where did um, you get it? I got it from Coker. Yeah, Coker yeah. bought the rights and the molds. Ah, uh, okay. And they make these tires with Firestone on them. But, yeah, we use some on... I think it was the six. Yeah, I, I did notice like you can buy the Firestones for three hundred, or buy the Coker, which is almost identical, and it's, it's like cheaper. ninety bucks. Yeah, it's, but it's the same. Yeah, it's the same. I just think you just got to save. Just change the mold. Yeah, yeah, that's cool though. I really dig it. Yeah. Uh, so what are you doing next? What's coming up after this? Um, I got a couple projects where I don't know what I'm actually making. Um, I got a couple ideas. There's this motorcycle here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. I just got to think of a bike for that one. But oh, yeah. this is this is an idea that actually I had. Craig sent me this. We're Aircraft. talking about the idea of building a motor, and this is a Pratt and Whitney cylinder from a radial engine. It's crazy. Yeah. This is all one piece. I mean, the machining on it's crazy. But um, I love yeah. these things. Oh yeah, twenty five hundred cc. I was just going to ask. I think it's over two liters. Yeah, yeah, yeah two and a half liter. So if you made a single. Um, the size of the port. We gotta oh, make yeah. a carburetor for it. Yeah, I've seen people do it, and it's got this little like tiny dinky carburetor. I'm like, no, you need like a matching size. Even if it runs like crap, you need the big ass carburetor. It's. So, I mean, I've always there, the, and this is of the of the prettier ones in my opinion. But there's yeah, there's oh, it's some, a cooling fence. That's yeah. and, yeah, and, and they're and they're fence. cheap too because like they have just tons of them out there. But, you do I mean, that. You, and you I'll do be, have to build a motor. Even to, the whole lower end. Yeah. Yeah. The lower end is the hard part. You, you, so you're thinking about making an entire lower end yourself for this cylinder? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? It was, it was Rod Smith and I were talking about it for a while. Like, oh, man, it would be, be fun to build an engine together. And we'll see if we have the time. But it, he sent this to me during uh, the shutdown because my building was shut down. And, you know, he, I think he felt bad for me. So he gave me something to look at. You know, at he's, home. Like, he's like, yeah, well, maybe this will bring you happiness. You'll think of something. And I think it just kind of pissed me off a little more. It's just like, like right now, I really can't do anything. So you couldn't even get in here to get your tools or anything? No, no. L.A. was a pretty strict shutdown, so they shut down the whole building. I mean, it was maybe about a month into it, um, they let me kind of quietly come in and just kind of tinker for a few yeah. hours. Yeah. So that's when I started building that, that turbo Buell. Okay. So I was Again? Like, yeah, because I mean, no one knew I was working, so there was no expectations from any clients. I'm like, right. I'm going to get my bike done. So that one's, that one's shh, done and at my house now. Shh, don't tell anybody. It's yeah. over. No, I mean, I already got paid, so we're good. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you move yeah. on. Yeah. Well, well, dude, I'm, um, I'm always impressed. I'm always floored. Anybody that asks who's the best, and it's always Max is on to me, whether you know that or not. This guy. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so you were not, you're not second on the list. You're, this, you're the primary person I don't want to interrupt. So in my opinion, uh, you know, the I don't bullshit know. just I'm mean, that's not just bullshit. Comes out of me. Hey, these guys will tell you it's just the truth. You build the most beautiful stuff that's uh, out there. Thanks, in my opinion. thanks. I, I got yeah. lucky in the fact that I've got the opportunity to do these things now. So, you know, each time I get a 
you know, a client who comes to me and says, you know what, just do whatever you want. I'm like, I'm going to do that. Oh, I try to think of the craziest thing I can think of because who knows if that's ever going to happen again. So yeah, I call that the golden ticket and you'll get the golden ticket more. The more you do it, yeah. the more tickets come your way, and I think it's well deserved. I'd love to sit down and do a podcast at some point because what, the stuff I'm really interested in talking to you about is, is design and your approach. I love your humble nature and how you discuss it, but I know there's more going on than just winging it. You're thinking oh, about yeah. it all the time. I mean, my wife sees it all the time when I'm like, yeah. dude, I put my car keys in the fridge. She's like, you're thinking about something now. Yeah, and I yeah. just, I'm like, just not present because I'm yeah. like trying to figure something out. Or the worst was like on my personal bike, I put it all back together, I went and I rode it, and it just started running like shit. And like, I couldn't even be like present at home. I'm like, Sarah, my bike's not working. Something's wrong, even, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't figure it out, it was working perfectly. I tuned this thing so well. Turned out when I put the gas tank on, there was a, a choke cable. Oh. And like one of the fuel lines was like pushing on the choke cable and, and just leaving the choke on. And I'm like, it's like two days of misery. But um, yeah, no, yeah dude, I, I, I do get a little wrapped up in my head, but um, no, it's, it's all. Is, this is your outlet, and yeah. Anyway, we'll yeah. we'll sit down and talk about it more. But yeah, for now, I'm going to run to the airport and and leave you alone and tell you to quit procrastinating and get your shit done. I'm just going to clean the mill. Uh, all right, just clean. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like just like bite-sized things. I got to pick my son up at just five. And sweet, then, sweet. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> all right, dude. Well, congrats and thanks again. Oh, we'll, we'll come back. My pleasure. We'll see you soon. All right. Later. Now is the time of video where most people ask for money or donations or whatever. I'm not going to ask you for that. What I'm going to say to you is. If you want to see more videos and you want to learn more of what we've learned and you want to see a deep dive into a lot of these topics, go to our website and buy something. We sell everything from motorcycle gear, helmets, uh, motorcycle parts, specialized tools. We sell lots of things and they've all taken us years to figure out what the best stuff is and we figured it out. So go to revivalcycles.com. There's some really good stuff there. Everything from like kick-ass hand grips from Posh to Radiance LED lighting and everything in between. We wanna teach you what we know, but this stuff takes time and it takes real effort to make these videos and make them good for you guys. So go support us by helping yourself to the cool stuff you already need. And it helps us because we make a little bit of profit and then we can justify doing more videos. Thanks for your support.